Yeah, yeah, it's the Nympathy Show. Go by the name of Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom! Got the homie Brian B. Known in the building. Don't you know? This is the Nympathy Show. We are the Nympathites. What's good with y'all? I'm doing all right. How you doing today, sir? Doing good, man. I'm doing great, man. Doing great! Mm-hmm. Static. Oh, man. I like, I like your background. Right? Hey, man. You know. Your background is hitting. <laughs> ah. Woo! Shout day. out to Carlicia checking in, man. Hey, give me a reason. Give me a reason. Shout out to everybody on Twitch, YouTube, Facebook Live, Instagram, Twitter. Make sure you like and subscribe, retweet, share, all the above. It's the Nympathy Show. Shout out to everybody checking in. Make sure y'all like and subscribe. We try to, uh, we need to set a goal for our YouTube subscribers. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, those who get up in the in the, the early subscribers to get some of this merchandise that's coming. Yeah. Oh, man. We got Doug Bennett uh-huh. in the building. What's good, homie? Hello. Hello, sir. Uh, if you see him, point him out. Point him out. <laughs> yeah, I, I have a choose one. Choose one, right? Let's do it. Choose one. Who you got in the headbutt fight? <laughs> <laughs> you got Tyra Banks. Yo, got it. Rihanna. Mm. Lies, because I got the game on lock. Plies. <laughs> Neo. Or Tory Lane. Hmm. I gotta go with Yo Gotti. I don't so I was thinking about Yo Gotti, but Tyra got Yo Gotti, Yo Gotti got that Stephen A. Smith. God damn. But Tyra got the height. Tyra's taller than everybody on the list. <laughs> so she come from up top and you boom. Damn, you right about that. Hero shit. I'm taking him. I'm taking Tory Lanes. Because now, if he because if he doesn't win the first time, he'll definitely get a second shot at it. Oh, wow. Point him out. Point him out. You, bro. <laughs> All right, y'all. That was another vicious Nympathy Show. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Talk to everybody in the, in the chat. Checking in. Facebook, mm-hmm. YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, IG. Yeah, man. I gotta check out who's on your IG. Say, um, Yo Gotti. Oh, you said Neo can't fight. I mean, we just a headbutt competition. Know. But Neo be dancing. He got some type of moves. He be whirling that dumb around trying to do them Michael Jackson spins. I didn't know how big his head was until he ran out of hats. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Hey, man, we do not have enough material to cover that thing anymore, bro. We gave I'm you what God. we had. And that's it, big dog. That shit don't make no kind of sense, man. For real. Like, that shit is crazy, bro. And, and what makes it so bad... To make it bigger? <laughs> make it look bigger. <laughs> what makes it so bad is... It almost seems like his brain is rebelling. Because if you look, he'll have, like, this little crease that comes right here. And it starts to protrude on the east and west of it. <laughs> So it's like his thought processes only go left and right, but never north and south. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. I'm serious. Talk about it. Seems like everything somebody told him never went in one ear and out the other. It just stayed there. It just stayed there. <laughs> <laughs> it just stayed there. Yo, random news, yo. Shout out to Fabio Foreign, man. Fabio Foreign. Now um he he's okay. he's one of these young whippersnapper rappers. Y'all know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> What's his name again? What's his name again? Like, nah, isn't it Fabio Foreign, man? Um yeah, he, foreign. he slept with his half sister's sister. Okay. Maybe that's that, that makes her his third sister. Yeah. Right? They're not related. <laughs> Like oh, by they blood, are? they're not related by blood. So like, right. so is she worth the risk? Well, he said he says he regrets it. I probably wouldn't have told nobody that. But you know, me either. Then if I, if you regret it, then why say something? Yeah. I mean, you know, at the time, you know, it was That's probably like telling your girl, 
That's like telling your girl you cheated on her and then say, I regret doing it. Then yeah. don't say shit. Yeah, yeah. Don't say nothing. You don't need to know this, sis. I'm just changing yeah. my ways, but you don't need to know. Yeah. That's right. The Lord, <laughs> the Lord says, the Bible says, let not your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Right. <laughs> you know <laughs> just saying, yeah, man. Um, that's messed up, though, right? But like, why? Why would we talk about how bad it is for him? Why would she want to do that, knowing where her relation is to him? City, do you want me to answer this? Do you want me to answer this, or should you? Because women ain't shit. Like, what are we talking about here? <laughs> that's not what I thought he was gonna say. <laughs> what you thought he was gonna say? No. What'd you think I was gonna say? No, cause she ain't like, that's my, that ain't my brother. I mean, that's bro, bro. Let's stop it. Can we please finally in 2022 come to a consensus that women are just as ain't shit as we are? Yep. Oh, yep. I'm not. Yeah, I'm yeah. That. Thank Ooh, you. Yeah. So finally, we are free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Let us just start telling the truth. She knew what she was doing, bro. She knew that joint was not aesthetically pleasing at all. But she didn't care. And I applaud her as long as she lives in her truth. I applaud her. Oh, so y'all ain't gonna y'all ain't gonna clap with me, niggas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's up, man. <laughs> y'all terrible man. nah that man, oh man so so y'all saying y'all ain't never smashed sisters before no no okay no, I ain't got, so you saying uh, you, no. if, if, if you weren't if you didn't have the opportunity are you saying just because you didn't have the opportunity oh, oh but that's di- what you're saying is different that's, if you that's... had the opportunity would, do you think the, the decisions you were making in your youth, do you think you would do it? In my youth? Probably. Shit, I do but, but those are, you talking about I smash a girl and then smash her sister. This is like adjacent to his sister. That's his half sister. Sister, sister adjacent. So let's say him and his half sister Semant- have the same Semant- father. Semantics. The sister his sister and the other girl have the same mother. Is this nigga drinking Ovaltine? That's what... <laughs> <laughs> this nigga that's drinking Ovaltine? That's a throwback. <laughs> oh, nah. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, you're right. But that you're right. But we ain't blood, though. Yeah. We ain't blood. Especially if she ain't coming around. She live with her mother, man. It don't feel like my sister. This is some other girl. That's... <laughs> You don't want me to hit it. You better point them out. Point them out. You yeah, point them out. Real, but yeah, that you is... can't be having no extra marital families and not saying nothing. I'm about to Thanks. say that is a problem. You know what I'm saying? Pop with the rolling point stone. Out. Point them out. And he out here with these multiple families across town. And then you get old and you meet somebody out at the day party and you bring them home and grandma like, oh, uh, excuse me. Where do you know them from? Oh no, what? That's your sister. And take, oh, and, take you, and take you in the back and open up the front of the Bible with them holograph hands on it to show you the family too and how y'all connected. And now you want to fight your father. Because <laughs> <laughs> this nigga messing up your love life. Yeah. Why didn't you stay with mama? Why didn't you stay with your mama? You 18 years old and moved out. You could have stayed in that house a little longer. Um, this ain't about me, daddy. This is about your choices in life. could at least told the nigga. <laughs> Yo, um, so on this show on Nipathy, we definitely like to highlight men, especially black men. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, rest in peace to retired Brigadier General Charles McGee, part of the pioneering all black Tuskegee Airmen during World War II. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, one of his most decorated pilots. He uh, he died Sunday. You know, today and. Mm-hmm. Age of 102. He flew up, uh, 409 combat missions spanning World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. Wow. Wow. 
Yeah, that born is in, wow. born in December 7, 1919 in Cleveland, Ohio. His plane was Damn, hit he, twice in combat. Uh, he was born on the day Pearl Harbor took place. That's crazy. That is. I didn't realize how crazy it was to be a, 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 a airman until I watched Red Tails. Like, yo, you really just up in the sky and then niggas come out the sky and just start shooting at you and you got to shoot back but not get shot at. And you, man. But yo. <laughs> <laughs> No, but real talk. Like any man, other time, talk. you're getting shot. At. I mean, yeah, but you in the air though. <laughs> but I don't. I don't think people really and truly understand how fast them damn planes mm-hmm. are going. Mm-hmm. Like, do you understand, bro? Like that shit is like a a roller coaster on a hundred, a mm-hmm. million. Like your fastest roller coaster, multiply that shit by a thousand. Mm-hmm. That is a plane. Well, how far, how fast talking- were you think them old ones? We talking about. The- like eighty World War Two, <laughs> like like now, cause now, cause now we got jets. No, I'm a, I'm a big of course, propeller. Of course, of course, they ain't as fast as the jets now, but they were still fast. It's, it's, and, I'm sure, yeah, we still got horses. It had to be. Few, it still had to be a few hundred miles an hour to get it. Yeah. Get something that heavy up and off the ground. Yes. And off the ground. And you're talking about man, your reflexes. Like mm-hmm. they didn't have. I don't think they had sophisticated. They well, I'm pretty sure they didn't have the sophisticated technology we have now. So pretty much they like you got a <laughs> niggas had a regular compass. Yes, yeah, <laughs> like, like, <laughs> like uh, uh, yeah, nigga looking at the sun like ah oh, dang, we been flying the wrong right. way. <laughs> yeah. Matter of fact, they didn't even have they didn't even have the, the roof joint, the, the top they had the yeah. top down. Hey, go. On the roof. <laughs> hey, how I go? How I go? Hey, hey, boom, boom, city, how I go, man. I don't think we never, never, never. <laughs> Niggas ain't had no roof Hell out yeah. the door, man. Just <laughs> and then, and then, and then what made it so bad is they had them damn goggles. Man. They had them bad boy yeah. goggles back in the day. Yeah. That's yeah. why them coats so thick. Nigga, you, yeah, man. nigga had to put wool inside a leather coat, bruh. <laughs> <laughs> you know how cold Hell that yeah. is Hell up yeah. there, nigga? <laughs> oh, my God. That's Shut crazy. Shout, yeah, shout out to them for real. For real. And they got the raggedy planes. They didn't even get the nice stuff. And what made it so bad is them, did, planes, right? them planes, not only did you have to manually do the propeller, you had to run and jump in the shit as it was moving. Yeah, thank you. No. Hell yeah, you had no. to double dutch the propeller uh-huh. yes. to get in that bitch. Like, I know so niggas. Had to. I ain't niggas looking like Smokey on Friday trying to stop trying to stop the joint with their foot. Man, you, that. Are you like like you playing um Wheel of Fortune. No, not Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> the, uh, Price, Price is right. right. Price is right. Yeah. Price is right. <laughs> 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 yeah, in, oh yeah. You think it's athletes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yo. bet you, I bet you they lap muscles was on point. <laughs> Yo, but um, so one more quick news story. Kanye, right? He uh yeah. recently his daughter recently had a four year old birthday party, and apparently his uh baby mama, his estranged wife, was not giving him the address to the party, man, and he was stressed out about it. Give my daughter a public happy birthday. I wasn't allowed to know where her party was. There's nothing legal. They're saying that these are the kind of games that's being played. At the light, it's the kind of thing that right really Boulevard. has affected my health for the longest. Uh, and I'm just not playing. I'm not letting. I'm taking control of my narrative this year. I'm being the father, the best father, the yay version of a father. And. I'm I'm not finna let this happen. And we're gonna be in real time. Take a slight right turn onto I-405 right here. North. Chicago, happy birthday. I love you. And I'm just putting this online because I need y'all support. I didn't call Kim, text the nannies. I got on the phone with Tristan. He he said, he asked Chloe, won't nobody give me the address to my daughter's birthday party right now. And that's gonna imprint in her mind that I wasn't there for her. You get what I'm saying? Like I'm... Yeah, man, Kanye, okay, man. One, anybody notice how the the 
GPS is giving directions in the back, and he wasn't making no turns. <laughs> like, <laughs> saying, turn left here, turn right here. This nigga just going like, straight nigga, the whole you time. It. Yeah, nigga, that's why you ain't get there, nigga. You not listening. <laughs> I gave it to you five times. Right. Why and why and why does his GPS why does his GPS sound like Don Lemon? Oh, I, I am not surprised that he changed the voice on his GPS. I'm gonna tell you right now, man. And this is real talk. Shout out to I know boy Biggs. Biggs with us. Shout out Biggs. Shout out Biggs. I, I I know we as black men are supposed to stick together, and that's the whole purpose of this show, Nympathy. Real talk. Is 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 for men, by men, you know, to support us, especially black men. But any of you niggas dumb enough to deal with these Kardashian bitches, <laughs> you deserve everything you get. I am Team Kim. I'm not Team Kim because I believe in the Kardashians. I'm Team Kim because I can't believe these niggas actually think that dealing with them is the right out of all of the women you could have. Of all, I mean, real talk, man. Real talk. I'm not even trying to be funny right now. And tell City, you tell me if I'm wrong, bro. Of all the women Kanye West could have, you pick Kim, bro. Kim. Kim. What, what other woman would have gotten him out of that debt that he was in? A black Kanye woman. got enough money to get himself out of debt. A black nah, woman would have sold, got black him out of sold fish plates until her man. She's been out there. So She's been telling, selling the shirts. She's been out there. Boom. You're seriously about to sit up here and tell me that it was in his best interest. She would have serviced the debt. To marry a Kardashian and pump not one, not two, but three kids out this bitch. I thought they had four. What is it? It's Northwest, Southwest, East West, oh, and uh, Chicago. <laughs> Chicago. Chicago West. Like, come on, man. Are you serious? Like, come on. Like, I'm for real, man. Kanye, I've always been a subtle supporter of Kanye's. But with this Kim Kardashian, a subtle supporter, man, because he started tripping. But with this Kim Kardashian shit, nigga, you get no sympathy from me. He may may be able to get it from y'all too. But from Doug, he ain't get no sympathy from me, nigga. You have more sympathy. You have more signs than a deaf person not to deal with that bitch. And you chose to deal with her anyway. So you deserve everything you give me. I hope Pete Davidson bleaches their hair blonde. Damn. Kanye, that's that's dirty. <laughs> that's my children. Kanye is on the spectrum. And we don't talk about that enough. That nigga has real mental health issues. What you talking about? Cable? Yo, what they gotta do? Why why everybody always wanna talk about this nigga mental health? I don't want to talk about no you gotta you gotta nigga. Start with you. People starting to use mental health as a scapegoat. Ain't yeah. shit wrong with Kanye. Ain't uh, shit wrong with Kanye, bro. Oh, it's, no. Oh, it's, it is. Yes, nah, it is. A, nah. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. No, nah, nigga. nigga. I'm not you can't that. even. You can't be an artist of that caliber and and be and be okay. So Jay Z crazy. Agree with that. Jay Z don't create the way that Kanye creates. Okay. All right. Fine. Um. Let's let's think about somebody that creates the way Kanye creates. Uh. Shit. I can't think of nobody. See. Yeah. <laughs> Don't stop till you get enough. Hey, Michael Jackson. That nigga was that nigga. Hey, was you not see what that normal. nigga did to his face? <laughs> yeah, you got me on that one. Yeah. I can't. Think of and then not and the nigga who believed he could fly. You see what that nigga did? Prince. Prince is another creator like that, and he. Yeah. And they had the pants walk. with the booty out, and his name was uh with the Z for for a time. Nigga, that was a goddamn division sign. The jump with the jump and the jump. That nigga said, "Yeah, nigga, that's long division." You know what I was talking about? Okay, so 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 before we move on, are you boom? Yes or no? Mm-hmm. You sympathize with Kanye West? Yes or no? <laughs> yeah, Thanks. I empathize with no, this. No, 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 I empathize no, with this. No, 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 no I, I empathize city, with this. City, city. I taking everything with into him. consideration, mm-hmm. taking into consideration who he married, mm-hmm. her backstory, mm-hmm. her history, mm-hmm. and everything that she's done. What? You what sympathize with this, <laughs> this is why they ain't want the nigga to be with his <laughs> this kids. Is, this, this, 
Is he using he the kid as a stick on a pinata? Nigga, he said, <laughs> <"Yeah>, "Daddy, you're <laughs> hurting me." <laughs> this nigga walked in there and went straight to the pinata. He's like, and everybody like, "Yo, hey, I told you." <laughs> and why that nigga got? And why that nigga in Calabasas with that leather outfit on? Man, good, just like a Tuskegee Airman. No, like he's not just like a Tuskegee Airman. Yeah. <laughs> He, does, he, he dressed he like, dressed like Mad Max. He dressed, he dressed like somebody that made that didn't make it through aviator school to be a Tuskegee. Mm. Airman. That's what he's dressed like. City, are you it's telling me you simple? He got City. leather snow boots. City, you said <laughs> you, <laughs> you sympathize with Kanye, <laughs> knowing Kim's backstory, knowing our history. Yes, yes or no? Yes, and oh. No. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like he got him out of debt. Well, uh, then he get in. He got into that while he was with her. He was already. Should, it ain't Ralph though. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all. Sir. No, y'all I'm, should be. Y'all. I said, but, should. I, but but I also say no because after a while you need to. You got to admit I have some issues that I need to get worked out. And like and he just that, refuses. Bro. He refuses okay. to acknowledge that. Let me ask one. Let me ask y'all. Real talk. Mm-hmm. We're not talking about just sex, so let's not. Let's go ahead. Of course, of course, mm-hmm. you could bang a Kardashian. Would either of you I wouldn't bang be in a relationship with a Kardashian? Let alone pop children out of them. Yes or no? Hmm. At, this current, at, this, <laughs> <laughs> at this current, at this current state. See what that alibi gets alimony. Y'all try. Y'all try. <laughs> yes. Y'all know damn well y'all wouldn't. Y'all know y'all wouldn't. Y'all I mean, would be I'll... in more debt once y'all get done with them. Mm. And like know. we I like I said, I... what you think that's what's <laughs> happening to Travis right now? You think you think the Kardashians are turning on him? Have they, you heard from his ass since? They left it. Cause you can't. He the one that gave Kanye the address to the party. All right, fine, fine. Answer me this question. First of all, Riddle Tristan was fake for that because you could have dropped the pen. You don't need the location. Damn. You don't need the address. You could have dropped the pen, nigga. Don't Tristan, act Riddle, me this. Riddle me this. Name one nigga that came out better than he was before when he started dealing with a Kardashian. Go. Ray J. No, he wasn't. No, he ain't. Yeah. No, he ain't. Hell yeah, Ray no. J got man all on them technology and shit. Ray J get, getting money. Ray, he, Ray, Ray J, J right. getting money. He's better now than he was then. Let's Google. Ray Ray J is getting money. He though. was still he was still Brandy brother back then. Like the nigga had no. to step, yeah. Let's let's not let's not speculate. Ray J. Yeah. Why you, why let's you look, not. Why why you looked that up? Yo, social media speaks, man. Um. Fourteen million is what Ray J is worth. <laughs> yeah, how much? How much you think he was worth before that? No, that's not the question. Nah, how much nigga, is that Kim, was. How, no, no, hold on. How much is Kim worth as a result of what Ray J filled her up with? I mean, that's he dropped the ball. You know. Yeah, two of them. Yeah, yeah. He, he should. <laughs> <laughs> he should have got her pregnant. <laughs> Come on, man. He should got her pregnant. Now nah, she knew better. Told you. Nigga was better off being brand. She wasn't brother. that though. She wasn't that. She was like everything had to happen the way it happened. But that's but that's why he didn't, because she wasn't that. Yo. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he said well, you hit her fart in the bathroom after you promised her head. Yo, that shit crazy. Or did I say today? Nah, bro. And I think I got a little as as I'm concerned, I don't believe women fart. I know that's crazy to say. I just don't believe it, bro. I, yeah, I can't allow are. myself. I can't oh, allow man. myself to believe. It. I are. just can't. I can't. I can't allow myself to believe that women fart. Nigga, I just some can't. women sell it. They they do it in a jar. Oh my god, yo! <laughs> they do it in a jar and be like twenty nine ninety nine, nigga. And they be like two, please. please. I cannot allow myself to believe that shit, bro. I just can't. I cannot allow myself to believe That's it. That's disgusting. And, Yo, and I was thinking, but, but, but Boone, let's think about this. This shows you how nasty men are. We crave something that shits and farts. And the bigger it is, the sexier it is. 
the ass. Tell me men aren't get, tell me men are not lost in it. Yes, tell me it men are not disgusted. Like I have literally laid my head on the joint, like it was mm-hmm. a pillow, as if I'm totally unaware of yeah. what comes out this and, joint. And felt at ease, nigga. Yes. I yes. didn't want to do this all day, nigga. Yes. <laughs> you just came. Come on. Man. Come on from a hard day's work. All time. Come on from a hard day's work of being treated like an ass mm-hmm. just to lay my head mm-hmm. on. Nigga just Lord, snuggled. Nigga, nigga, get, get in just like, snuggled in. Snuggled in. Yeah. And ain't nothing like ain't nothing like the ass that that curve and you gotta lift it up and it just fall. It. Ooh. Woo. That's why you gotta give them that alone time. Never <laughs> trust a big butt. <laughs> Never time. trust a big butt and a smile. That girl is what city? I'm about to say wow. Poison. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That girl is wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hold on, one, one more. Um, women swear they broke, then boom, another Amazon pack. Mm. That's why they broke. Yeah, it all depends problem. on what comes in the package. The fire, the jar is to sell the fights. <laughs> gotta get the jar. <laughs> <laughs> Nigga, you mad you bought a fire jar and you open it and the jar broke? Like, like nigga, like, yeah, yeah. Like, bro, like, the fire Well, you in rare there. form? Hey, city, you in rare form tonight, boy. This nigga is on his taxation without representation tonight, boy, ain't he? Nigga bought two fire jars and they both broke on, on train. That nigga city. How do you prove that you've captured the right. part? Right. Yeah, <laughs> How do you authenticate? Woo! That nigga City is on his Mary and Barry tonight. How do you? That nigga, <laughs> that nigga on his Muriel Bowser tonight. Ain't he goddamn? No. Because how you even how you even catch him? Like, you just... What's the diet leading up to... to not oh, come on, man. Life? Stop. Gotta, stop. Stop. Oh, I ain't about to like, no. <laughs> kill my fantasy. I said I don't believe women fart. I don't believe women. <laughs> I don't. And y'all are not about to kill my fantasy. Women don't, don't fart. Boy, women don't fart. Okay. I, can't, I can't even watch them TikToks where women be playing like they fart. I can't even do that joint. Well, I'll block your ass in a heartbeat on that yeah, shit. Don't do it. Ain't, ain't so nothing like the, the fart. The <laughs> old, what's that old school 90s sound they used to make on the cartoon? <laughs> they be dropping bombs out here, man. Hey, Bombs over Baghdad. <laughs> yo, so uh, my man Doug, yo, yo, he he came up with this topic right here. Do black men measure up? So, uh, so th- there was a video. I can't show the video because it was like it's like major network and everything. Mm. But yo, explain the video to us, um, Doug. What, what's going on with? Black well, it was, men a being available. It, was a it was a video between two. Di- it was a dialogue between two black men on the network, and they were talking about um, how black men <clears throat> don't measure up to the educated modern day black woman with what she makes due to the high incarceration rates, the high in- unemployment rates, and the fact that black men uh, are the only man in America who makes less than their woman. And then the thing that caught me the most was when they said, the the moderator asked the guy, he said, should women uh, lower their standards? And that man responded and said, should women, black women, uh, should black women sacrifice their happiness on the altar of a black man's struggle? And he said, absolutely not. And that really, really resonated with me because the one thing that I can say for men across the board, but especially for black men, is that our happiness has never been a priority when it comes in relationships. Like, I, I I don't think there's any man out there who can honestly say his happiness has ever been made a priority not saying they didn't stumble across him being happy or we blindly bumped into his happiness but as far as it goes with continual perpetual prioritized happiness in a relationship 
I don't think a man has ever had that in a relationship, not a black man. And I believe that prioritizing happiness in a relationship for either party is a mistake, which is the reason why our divorce rates, especially in the black community, are so high. And the main reason why we're getting divorced is over irreconcilable differences, which in and which is another way of saying he doesn't make me happy. So I left. And what I think is, I think that's very nearsighted because what you're saying is that as a woman, because I have to speak because women are the ones who file 70 to 80 percent of divorces in America. You're saying as a woman, pretty much that you make him happy all the time. And I think anybody who's ever been in a relationship can say that is the furthest thing from the truth. So. That's the reason why I wanted to bring that up. If black men don't measure up, then where are we truly falling short at where a woman's happiness should be prioritized over the fact of just us being together for the sake of the race? Because I feel like women are allowed to be with men because of their happiness. But black men, but black black women can be with men, black men as a luxury. Black men are encouraged to be with black women out of necessity. Where a black man's happiness, like I said, is never put as a priority. But a black woman's happiness is always at the forefront, which is the reason why I believe a lot of them walk away from relationships the way that they do. Um, I, okay, so I watched the video, and one of the things the guy brought up was about how black women are more educated, and like you said too, Doug, a lot of them, like, are making more money than their man. Now, they say it wasn't, like, that he didn't do it, but when you read stuff like the Willie Lynch theory, it says, hey, don't do no business with the man. Do the business with the woman. Don't, you know what I'm saying? Don't encourage him, encourage her. Build her up. Give her the business acumen. Give her the money to make her look down on him to cause a division in the family. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So, and especially now, especially now, like in these last year and a half, two years, it's been a big push in media and big business. Support black women. Give black women money for this. Uh, uh-huh. Build up their businesses. And, and a lot of black women will say, we're not supportive. They, we're not protected. The black woman is the, the bottom of the da-da-da-da-da. This country has been making a very big push to make you as great as you can. And I'm not upset with that. But I will say, have y'all noticed that they have never done that for black men? And see, to to piggyback off that, man, that whole argument where I don't know where this 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 narrative comes from, where black women feel like they're the gold medal recipient of the oppression Olympics. I've never understood that, because like you said, City. Black men have never had the assistance, whether whether it is the welfare system or anything like that, black men have never had the assistance that black women have been given, even though that that assistance that was given is to spite or belittle the black man. Mm-hmm. We've never, ever, ever, ever had assistance like that legally or or federally. Mm-hmm. And I think it's indicative of the mindset of where our people are. Mm -hmm. because nothing will ever replace... I'll put it to you like this. Women who indulge in welfare is the equivalent of a man choosing to masturbate instead of being with a woman. It is a temporary Mm -hmm. fix, Mm -hmm. but it is not a long-term solution. It's not supposed to be. It's literally supposed to be few years till you get yourself together 
understood yeah. but that's what it's turned into mm-hmm. and what it's morphed into now is morphed into this money grabbing money hungry society that we're in where now our black women look at us and if we're not like i can't i can't tell you how many times i hear from black women i need a man on my level on my level on my level and i'm like what does that even mean Women out here got degrees and jobs, man. I, I'm a PhD. Okay. My yeah. grandma had my grandma had a job. My great grandma had a job. Like women, but I don't understand careers, this whole, I mean, careers, careers. But but that, but the thing about it is, I don't understand this whole obsession with jobs and money because we have all in the black community we're stronger together than we've ever been apart. Oh, like and that's, and that's that's where every race like and yes, and I, I it wasn't that video. It was some other video I was watching, and they were talking about how like all the things that black people doing during the civil rights movement, things of that nature. That was that, a lot of that was built on. No, I know what. I, yeah, I know what you're talking about. It was a black dude sitting in a chair and a black woman sitting yeah, in a yeah, chair with my yes. Yeah, he was right. He said there were net when we were financing Dr. King and Malcolm X and the Freedom Riders and all of them. They were they were financed by middle aged black families. Mm-hmm. There were no millionaires in the black community. Even athletes weren't millionaires back in the day. Mm-hmm. Bill Russell, Ma- uh, Muhammad Ali. Uh, Lou Alcindor before he became Kareem Abdul Jabbar, there were mm-hmm. none of Sam Cook, none of we did not have any millionaires like that mm-hmm. the way we do today. And then we were still getting stuff taken care of. And see, this is where I say when it comes to the happiness thing, why a man's happiness has never been prioritized. Because when a man does do something to make himself happy. I'll I put it like this. A man's happiness should be a byproduct of him making his woman happy. Tell me if I'm wrong. Yeah, yeah I see you. Yeah. That's, what, that's the ha- way it is, but if it, it, in, rel- in like actual day-to-day relation with her, it, you, you have to be individually happy because eventually mm-hmm. her making you happy is going to turn her off and i understand you saying that boom but name one time a black man has ever been allowed to put his happiness at the forefront of anything and that's a a legit question billy d williams (laughs) (laughs) you want my own before law he does it every time I'm just saying, man, men, and that's the thing, that's the reason why, because I was having this conversation with somebody the other day, a female the other day, and I was telling her, and she finally came to the realization, she said, Doug, I have to admit, you were right. Y'all don't leave. We leave y'all. She said, I thought about all my relationships and everything, and she said, I left every dude I dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I said, really? She was like, yeah. She was like, the one thing I will say, she said, men may mess up, but women mess up too, but y'all don't leave. She said, y'all, I said, you want to know the reason why men don't leave is because men are commitment. It's hard, to, it's hard to find another one that'll take this crap. <laughs> I'm so about to give you, her her ass. Yeah, 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 I, I need to ride this to the wheel. I'm, I'm not going to let you do that, Gus. I'm not going to let you do that, Gus. <laughs> she's not giving me. That's the, she, is, she doesn't realize she's giving me a leash. <laughs> yeah, uh, she's extended my leash. Right, right. y'all ridiculous, man. So y'all just gonna play us like and that. Her, her self. Y'all gonna, y'all gonna play us like that. So the only reason why we don't leave is because we can't find somebody else to deal with our shit. Is what you're yes. saying? Sometimes. Wow. Sometimes. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta yeah, you this. yeah, you know, it's it's a nigga on somebody's maybe, couch. Maybe, maybe all jokes aside, maybe it's the fact that men, like men, we just don't quit. We don't believe in quitting. Like real talk, as a man, think about it, man. How many times? Have, how many times have we been trained as a kid to grow up to 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 tolerate pain or to tolerate uncomfortable situations? What's the first thing they tell you when you fall down? Stop that crying. Mm-hmm. Like I, I think men walk are. Tra- yeah. You walk it off. 
It don't hurt. Pain. I remember in the military, they're like, pain is weakness leaving the body. Well, I'm a strong motherfucker then because y'all have been putting me in pain for the past three months. Like men have always been taught that stuff. So I just believe that us, we're built for those hard times. Mm -hmm. We're built for them, which is the reason why men don't leave relationships. I say it like this. If a man ever left a relationship, truly left it, you as a woman need to look at yourself. You as a woman need to look at yourself. Either A, this nigga was going to kill you and had to get away from you, or B, he found something about you that he shouldn't have found out. You ever heard like a, like, a, you talking about the military, like training or like war or some shit like that, that like they just pause for, for, for feelings and shit like that? You'll die, because- nigga. <laughs> you, die. you will die. You will die. <laughs> Like, nigga, they're dropping bombs. Yeah. They're moving feet, nigga. Yeah, for real. Let's Crap stop right off. now. Uh-huh. I know there's a woman out there who's right now on her menstrual cycle. Well, let's stop shooting just for a week. Let her get herself together. And then we'll be right back to it. No, uh, it don't but work. You know, but you got to stagger them. You got to stagger them. <laughs> because... Because <laughs> they all in there at the same time. Yeah, they have a week, nigga. Yeah. Their power but, but, combined. But let, me, nigga. but let me ask y'all this. Let me ask y'all this. Being for real, do y'all think <clears throat> that we as black men don't measure up to our women? I think that <clears throat> we both both sides have serious issues that need to be addressed personally okay. within themselves uh-huh. and it feels a lot of times if i'm being honest it does feel like women finan- well, at least financially women are a little ahead of the curve you know what i'm saying but even to their argument a lot of guys haven't college isn't pushed for men, the way it's pushed for women, you know, you t- t- and and a man, it, it would be easier for a man to go get some, get a job or a career working with his hands. So you're a plumber, your electrician, your HVAC, things of that nature. And a man will look at that and say, "Oh, I, oh, I only got to do this class or this certification for a few months, and I get paid X amount of money." Now he may not make as much as a woman who's worked her way up the corporate ladder or through a, a law firm or whatever, but he also has not accrued the same amount of debt she has to go to school. But she'll still, some of them, a lot of them will still look down on him because he doesn't make as much money, but he also, like I said, hasn't generated the same amount of debt. So financially, mm-hmm. they are a lot closer than a lot of women want to admit. Yeah, Lincoln Tech. But don't, you be, but don't you believe that desire for money? Because this is what this is what I believe the social welfare, the great society brought in by Lyndon Bain Johnson in 1968. And if you don't know what it is for my nymphothites, go look it up. Because that was the beginning of the financial castration of the black man in America. Um what happened was I believe our women chose money over their man and they chose resources over relationship Mm -hmm. because anybody knows for government assistance what is the one thing you cannot have man a man in the house come on man they they, they were so blatant with it they actually had a a no man in the house law it was literally called no man in the house literally and they would send people around to check, randomly pop up to see yep. if a nigga was there. In the house. In the closet. Keep it in the closet. And my thing is this, and this is my thing, man. When you look at it, the reason why college, I believe, was never pushed on black men is because with black men, there is an urgency to build your value. Mm-hmm. You don't have the luxury of staying in college for four years or eight years while you get your advanced degree or even longer beyond that to get your PhD and all that other stuff. The only way you literally and truly have that type of luxury is if you come from a stable household that allows you Mm -hmm. to be able to venture out like that. But you ain't coming from the inner city like that. 
because your immediate thing, especially as a black man, is I got to hurry up and make some money because I got to help my family. Or I got to hurry up and make some money because I got to build my value. Where women, on the other hand, are born with an inherent value. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, they can go to college, number one, because college is not about trade or work. College is about social network. That is what college is really about. College is a college is a but that's the reason why you don't find too many people or too many mm -hmm. women for that matter in STEM programs. Because mm -hmm. honestly, STEM programs is where the money is. Mm -hmm. STEM pro science, technology, electronics, and math, that's where the money is. Because STEM programs is what what runs our our our, our society. Engineering, all of that stuff. But college that's is why, more so that's, that's why men but, get paid more. Yeah, look, I'm not about to touch that. But college, <laughs> college is about social network and women being more socially uh, uh, calibrated than men because they've been having to deal with men and deal with the social settings since they started developing breasts. Men don't really deal with social settings and social calibration until we get some shit. Like, think about it in school. The guy with good clothes or great clothes is the ones that girls like. Then right. it turns to him getting a car. Mm. You always have to bring some sort of value to the table for women to even so much as look in your direction. But women get women have an inherent value. So them just being gets them attention. So even if they were to pursue themselves in college, which ain't nothing wrong with that. They still run the, the very likelihood of being able to find a man. Mm -hmm. who will be able to help them get ultimately where it is they want to go. Mm -hmm. The shit that they achieve for themselves is kind of like icing on the cake before the cake actually shows up, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I just had a thought. <laughs> More often than not, between the two, and, it, and this is probably also part of the problem, women are usually taught to look for a husband. You, you know think so? Mm -hmm. And maybe not is as much in, maybe not as much in the black races now, but but other I've heard other races say that like you go to college to find you a husband. You know, say find somebody to take care of you. Women are black women are usually taught you know go to college get your degree get your money up this that and the third so you can be self sufficient. Black men are never taught to go find a wife. Or uh, taught to how to be a husband or anything of that nature. So I think that is also a part of. It. If we being honest, that is a part of the disconnect. Absolutely, when, I didn't learn that. Yeah, but don't, I definitely but didn't see, learn how to be a husband. And then, but and, see, and, but see, and boom, are, don't you believe? Don't you believe that the reason why we're not taught to find a wife is because we know that if we build ourselves up and build our value up, like if you build it, they will come. They'll come, yeah, but that don't mean that you're good at it. Understood. But at the end of the day, at the end of the day, man, you could also make the same, you could make a very salient argument that a lot of our women aren't taught to be wives either. Absolutely. And uh, that's yeah. the reason why that's the reason why you come. That's the reason why a lot of females, because this is my thing. The Bible says that he <laughs> that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. Mm -hmm. But the thing that kills, but the thing that people really don't, everybody wants to jump to and obtain favor from the Lord because that's women's thing. You need to find a wife because I'm your favor. But the thing that people fail to realize is that scripture says he that findeth a wife, mm -hmm. not a girlfriend, not a fiance, not a jump off, which means that shorty, you're already supposed to be a wife. Meaning you're already supposed to know how to submit to me. You're already supposed to know how to undergird. You should already know how to follow my lead. You should already know how to carry yourself with decorum and etiquette where strength and honor is your clothing. You know, the Proverbs 3110 woman, you know, you should already be that, which means that when I come along and I find you, you should already fit like a square peg into a square hole. But we oh, but a lot of our women overlook that, and they think that be be I can become a wife after I say I do, and it don't work that way. 
Yeah. It don't work that way. So yeah. I agree. A lot of black men are not taught how to be husbands. I agree with you wholeheartedly. And that comes from the absence of the black man in the household. However, you also have to make a very, you also have to in, uh, uh, um, point out that a lot of women aren't wise. Mm. And you got to understand, just because you're married doesn't make you a wife. Just because I pick up a basketball don't make me a basketball player. Mm-hmm. So th- so we definitely got to get those things together right. if we ever are trying to make this thing work. And I believe that we need to get away from this happiness thing. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I know my grandma and my, my granddaddy wasn't happy all the damn time. You can't be happy with eight kids in the damn house. Mm-hmm. My grandma was 16 of 16. So I know damn well my great grandma and great granddaddy wasn't happy all the time. Right. 16 of 16. God. 16 Dang. of 16, bro. No joke. My grandma was the baby of 16 kids. You really and truly think my great grandma and great granddaddy was happy mm-hmm. all the time? Yeah, so I don't know. I don't. I don't know where that's this happiness. That is. Like and even it was know, aunts and uncles. Like that's a lot of people. Uh, yeah. So I don't know where this Michael happiness. Violation. Comes in. I don't know where this. <laughs> I don't know where this happiness thing comes into play, man. I don't. I don't know where that came from. I really and truly don't know where this 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 incessant need mm. to be happy in marriage comes from. I would rather be content because content means I'm at peace. Mm-hmm. Well, hold up. So, do we, do we measure up? Um, I think that women are talking about. Well, first of all, in America, this is a society that's built on God. God, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? And in God, we trust. Right? Mm-hmm. You say and, it Well, and, and God, we trust. Right? Like on the on the back of the dollar, and God, we trust, and that is the dollar. You know what I'm saying? That's God in this nation. And you know, um, you know, you women are supposed to find they're supposed to follow the God they just see in men, right? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, traditionally men are the ones who's had the money. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they 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 follow the God that he had. He had the bread and shit. Now she could talk to God by herself. Mm-hmm. And and I was gonna say, I think that was that was a big part. That's of- a great that's a great analogy because you <laughs> had me for I was like, where is this nigga going? <laughs> I was like, where is this nigga going? Because that nigga because uh, you saw him, whenever Boone cock his head back, I'm like, because you know, they God. I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> But I was gonna say I think that's that's what that's what the introduction of the welfare program was like. Yeah, the mm-hmm. black community got caught caught with their pants down because before then black women couldn't really earn money <laughs> like that. Black women can't have bank accounts. They were, not just black women, women in general. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of those guys weren't faithful, so she just had to deal with it. She just had to whatever he did. Whatever but, family he had across town, she just had to deal with it. But 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 can I can I interject right there with everybody the, the, have a family across? I mean, everybody now. did. No, no, no. But but can I interject? Can I interject real quick? My grandfather did, but so what? <laughs> my question is this, though. This is my question. Do black men? Because I, I'm so sick and tired of this. He wasn't faithful argument, mm-hmm. and I'm not sitting up here saying that infidelity is right or wrong. I'm not. I'm just saying, why does it seem like that is the main argument with our women when it comes to us? As if we got the market cornered on infidelity. Yeah, on infidelity. But, like I, I'm just these, these are no no I mean, I'm not I'm not even I'm not even joking I'm not even, no I'm being for real boom I'm not even joking about this because the one thing I'm getting sick of and, and this is a direct shot at black women. Is I'm sick of them using excuses like infidelity and all of this other stuff. Like we're black. There's this black boogeyman. As if other races of women aren't dealing with the same shit off of their men too. 
I thought I, that's not what I thought you was gonna say. Me either. But they don't, <laughs> black women don't care about them hoes. They don't care about them white hoes, the Spanish no, hoes, no. them Asian hoes, well, the Middle Eastern hoes. But, they do not okay, care about okay. them. Oh, they oh, say wait, you wait, ain't making so, enough wait, wait, money wait, wait, to be cheating at the rate wait, that you do. Wait, wait. <laughs> to respond to what City's saying, if that's the case, then stop bitching about not being married. Stop bitching about the rate. Of the, the the percentage of single black mothers. Stop bitching about how men, black men, are not there. If you don't care about them hoes, the white hoes, the Asian hoes, the Latino hoes, then stop bitching about why you don't have what it is they have in their men. Because at the end of the day, I guarantee you, them jokers are putting up with some shit. Yeah. All for the name of their race. But we better than them men. That's why they be mad at us. Man. <laughs> you can argue with that point. <laughs> what? That we're better than their men? Yeah, we better than them, man. And what work? And I'm wait, wait. I'm asking you to back that up. I'm not saying no. I'm just saying in what way? Back it up. Man, you could be black. What you talking about? Like, mess up with this you went, the, you went to the bottom of the ocean on that one, baby. Yeah. You went to the bottom of the ocean on that Hell one. Yeah. We black, nigga. <laughs> what you talking about? All right, so if that's the case, if that's the case, if that's the case, then shouldn't us being black be enough for our women to choose us instead of choosing single them? They they could do bad all no, by themselves. No, no, no. Don't, don't get low. Don't get low, Ludacris. Don't get low. What I'm asking you mm-hmm. is, if being black makes us better than every other race of men, and other women recognize this, other races of women recognize that this in us, let's be honest. Other, other races of women recognize this in us, because that's another gripe of black women is that we date outside the race a lot. Mm-hmm. Then why is it good enough for them, but it ain't good enough for ours? Cause you ain't, supposed, had to that treat, already. You ain't supposed to treat me like that, nigga. You treat them like that. You don't treat me like who, that. Who? Who? Let me ask you a question. Who would you rather put up with bullshit off of? Your child or somebody else's child? My child. Answer the question, city. My child. Thank you. They look Thank at you. us like N- their child. No, you're you're missing they, my point. They, they grow oh, up. Oh, and don't boom, don't just understand. say stuff to say stuff. You're missing my point. My point is, <laughs> and to sit because this is city. Mm-hmm. If the, if out of everybody, what I'm saying is, if I'm gonna take bullshit off of somebody, I'm gonna take bullshit off of my child as opposed to another child. Meaning that every other race is like, yo, if I'm gonna take bullshit, let me take bullshit off of my man. I'm not going to take bullshit off of somebody else except for us. No, nah, they don't be, they don't think outside the base like that. Well, Who them? Oh, well, they don't be trying. Okay, f- forget that. Okay, yeah. Forget that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, why is it always the spotlight on black men? Like, do you understand Do you understand, man? And I was sitting back thinking about this the other day. Do you understand? And I was listening to Shahrazad Ali, who I think, man, she is a queen. She really Mm -hmm. and truly is. I love Mm -hmm. Shahrazad Ali. Mm -hmm. But I want you to hate her. I want no. You want to know why black women hated her on mass? It's because black because Shahrazad Ali held black women accountable. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is, if we're really going to have this conversation, the conversation that cities say we need to have with each other, mm-hmm. there's a lot of ugly, there's yeah. a lot of shit that's going to have to be said that people Absolutely. are going to have both men and women, but especially women. And the reason why I say especially women, especially. it's not it's not to dump on them. Hear me out, Boone. It's not to dump on them. But my question is, when have Black women ever been held accountable? And that's a legitimate question. I mean, I think the problem is... Right? No, answer my no, question first. No, 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 no. I, I, that, that's how I'm about to answer your question. Okay, okay, go ahead. That's I think the out. problem is we keep trying to get people to be accountable who don't want to be accountable. That's why, I, you know, I, I, was, I say this almost every week. 
cut them out of society. You want to act like that and you don't want to take responsibility for what you did or you mm-hmm. don't want to own up to what you did, go over there. Mm-hmm. You but can boom, be single. But city, you can city, die. The problem, I said every week, the problem, you can die. City, the you problem don't with be that apart. thought process, city, the problem with that thought process is going back to my initial st- question. How many, when have black women ever truly been held accountable at mass? So with that thought process, the majority of the black women out there are going to have to go somewhere. And, 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 but, but then what are you saying? Okay. So if that's the case, then what are you saying? Then what, what women does that leave for us except outside of the race? Nick, we can be single too. Like, look, I'm not dealing with you. See you see nigga don't want to hear that. Woo! No, no, I didn't say I have no problem with being single. What I'm telling you is what does that do for us? Because like I said before, black men, and I, I, I I've always had this question. I, I've always asked the black women this question. And if you ever want to stomp them, ask them this one question when they start dumping on black men. When is a black man in America never been held accountable for his actions? Right, but but and see, and that's the thing. We, if we talking accountability, they don't want to play the accountability game. They'll they'll oh they will pick it up once once they really feel like yo I'm not I'm not rocking with you for real. Like I'm like you know what I'm saying especially if because okay a big part of what they talk about is like you said like we've been talking about they aren't happy. So we say okay, what's your list of things that you need to be happy? And we start hitting those marks. Bop 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 bop. Now I got demands. You need, you need, and you will meet these demands if you want me to meet yours, or you can go elsewhere. Because now, let let black women tell if I start meeting these demands, I have leveled up. Everybody else see that I've leveled up. They gonna start coming over here more than they've been before. So you better. But my question is this. this: My question is this. This is my question to you, City. How many women do you know? Women, period. Forget the black woman thing. How many women, period, do you know are honest about what it is they want and then know what it is they need? It don't matter if I don't want you. You ain't got to be honest. You can keep come lying on, to yourself. You can lie City, to yourself. Come on, bro. You can City, you can't keep, du- City, you can't keep ducking the question. You can't keep ducking the question. How many women do you know are truly honest about what it is they want in a man and then balancing that off of what it is they need. Because how many times have you heard a woman, especially in our community, say, I want a man who respects me. I want a man who's nice. I want a man who's faithful. I want a man who's honest. And they get with the most lying, disrespectful, infidel they could in the entire neighborhood. Let this man use their womb up give them chance after chance after chance after chance, and then when their life is in shambles, they want the good man that they done passed up forever for boo-boo the fool to come around and salvage their life. While we sit up here and deal with all of the effects of the previous relationship we had nothing to do with. Toss them out. (laughs) But, City, that can't be your answer. That can't be your answer to everything. Because you don't want to listen. But, but, Using the military, you need to follow these directions, or you will Understood. die. Understood. <laughs> you will die, or you will be kicked out. Like there ain't no, it ain't no argument about this, big dog. You need to do what I say. You know I'm what with I mean? you on it, man. I'm with you on. I just, I just think, I just think to a certain degree, your solution is an oversimplification because it's not just because it's not just about us as black men just saying oh the hell with it but it's like yo if that's the case if that's the case then what we then then you're 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 saying because me I have no I've said it once and I'll say it again I have no problem with interracial dating I believe your preference should if you're a black man your preference should be a black woman if you're a latino man your preference should be a latino woman so on and so forth however if they are not meeting your needs, what are you supposed to do? Sit here and suffer, especially right. when you know, especially when you know that one person is prioritizing their happiness mm-hmm. over the necessity of the joining of two people together. 
Come on, man. What are you supposed to do? So if you're saying forget about them, forget about them, and we can agree that women at whole, as a mass, especially black women on whole, have not ever truly been held accountable, then you're pretty much saying the hell with the majority of them. Yes. <laughs> this man didn't even study. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Because once they realize, oh, he's not playing no more? Oh, I really have to do Yeah, you really have to do this. Just like I really had to do what you needed me to do and you wanted me to do, you really have to do what I need you to do and what I want you to do. I mean, I mean, it, it sounds good. It really does. It sounds- be, oh, no, I'm not saying it'll be easy. No. Simple, yes. Easy, no. I mean, you know, don't get me wrong. That's why I said it's an oversimplification because mm-hmm. it sounds good, my brother. It yeah, sounds well, it's- yeah, your your plan your plan sounds phenomenal. <laughs> I'm just you know what I'm saying you know what I'm saying, but I I just when I think about it I just I see it so multi layered. Oh yeah, I yeah, see yeah. it so multi layered. And we've been honestly, through so much individually much, and as a group. Yes, which is the reason why I said I have no problem with interracial relationships. I really and truly like, don't, and I don't have to it. strip it all down. And that's like what I'm saying. Like strip it all and, down. And that's and what I'm saying, City. And who is really willing to be that vulnerable, that open, and that honest to really sit down and strip this joint down? Because we can do all the TikToks we want. We can do all the sitting down with black men and black women and this, that, and the other. But until an honest, open conversation is had where people are really willing to, to, to like, like preachers used to say, uh, look beyond, look behind the veil, rip the veil open. Man, we're going to be here, which is the reason why I said I, Douglas Bennett, am not against interracial relationships because what are you trying to tell me? You're trying to tell me that I have a person over here where the stats and the facts and the history back it up, that they're prioritizing their happiness, their individual happiness over the prospering of a relationship. You're wanting me as a black man to sacrifice what my happiness already that's being sacrificed each and every day when I go out into this world, but also to put my happiness and my contentment and my peace on the back burner just to be with somebody who does not have the same moral values as far as it goes with happiness. Come on, man, you're setting me up for failure. Right. And you're telling me to do this in the name of blackness, but ain't none of y'all at these BL- BLM protests and ain't none of y'all at these black power protests going to be here in this house with me while I'm dealing with this one. True, that's true. Yes, you know, like we we can sit up here and talk about all the black love we want and I love black love. But all of y'all patting me on the back for having a, a black woman or patting this black woman on the back for having a black man, are y'all going to be in this house while they sitting up here dealing with this bullshit? No, you're not. Yeah. So that's the main reason why I don't have an issue. I don't have an issue with interracial relationships, especially with the trajectory of where things are going in the black community, because it's difficult, bro. It's very, I'm just speaking as a man because we've heard women talk about the difficulties with black men for decades, but we've never heard black men ever sit back and say, damn, these are the difficulties that we're facing dealing with our women. It's always been, no, nah, black man, love them no matter what. You, 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 you the man, you supposed to look beyond that as if we don't hurt or as if we don't have feelings or as if our feelings ain't valid. You know what I'm saying? So that's just my Alright, and on that note, good people, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank y'all for tuning in. Another week in the Nympathy Show. See y'all next week. Peace.